When it comes to user authentication, the experience really differs from platform. And when I talk about experience, not only from a UX perspective, but from a developer experience as well. And that's what I want to talk about today. How can we leverage our current ecosystem in React Native to build the future of off? This presentation is going to be divided in two parts. First, we are going to talk about the general concept about user authentication. And then we are going to dive into actual abstractions with React Native. But let's just start with some basic definitions so that everyone's on the same page here. What is authentication? Authentication is essentially the act of verifying a user credentials and asserting it against an identity. It's based on something that the user either knows, has, or is. And this is what we call of factors. Authentication factors is a layering strategy that strengthens security and decreases the chance of your account getting leaked in the end of the day, for example, if you use password as the first factor. But in order to talk about the future, shall we go a little bit into the past and visualize where we have started with user off and where we are heading towards? In the beginning of the 2000s, we have started with the basic logins, just basic password, email, and username. I don't know who here remembers the worst experience ever, for example, if you had to share your Facebook account data with some other website, you still had to use and to put your password there and share this with some totally random and creepy database. And so along the years, uh, organizations have put together specifications and protocols to solve this problem with single sign-on. That was the reason of what we know nowadays as OAuth and other protocols as SAML and OpenID Connect. So that, for example, if you are an employee in a company that has dozens of applications to do on a daily basis, you also don't have to memorize so many passwords. Well, this was the beginning of the experience is starting to get better. As hardware progressed along the years, we started to have biometrics. So the users can prove who they are with fingerprints. And then most recently, just a couple of years ago, the concept of pass keys have been introduced. Well, it's pretty obvious by then that the long-term usage by passwords has led to so many data leaks incidents. And this is due to passwords being a shared secret. And what do I mean by shared secret? You are not the only one who owns it or who actually knows about it. Your off provider also does. And who actually can guarantee what are the patterns and techniques that your password is being saved in an actual database? That's the sensitivity about it. I don't believe we should get completely rid of it, but today I want to show your newest friend. Let's talk about passkeys. Passkeys are a big step towards a passwordless future. We'll explore how it works, why they are more secure than traditional passwords, and how they are shaping the future of digital authentication. Here's a diagram in which it showcases interaction between an authentication server and the user's devices. It leverages the idea of public key cryptography. So let's go each by each step. First of all, the user device requests a challenge from the server. The challenge here, it's essentially a totally random nonce string. Once the server returns the challenge to the client, it goes to the device authenticator. 
The authenticator here, as I mentioned, is really the device hardware per se. So you could be using your iPhone, your Mac, doesn't really matter. The key point here is that the authenticator is going to prompt the user if they are really trying to sign in. And it's going to trigger biometrics. Biometrics are going to help the user to prove who they really are in order to unlock the device private key. And with that private key, the device is going to encrypt the challenge in order to send it back to the server, which is the five step over there. The server then, it's going to validate the signature with the user's device public key. And if everything goes fine, it creates a valid session. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Well, this concept and this idea of public key cryptography has been around for a while. It's not a new thing with pass keys and web off and at all. It has been around since the 90s, 70s. And it has covered a variety of use cases in the industry. One of them, you may well know, it's secure encrypted messaging communication. So let's take a look at an example. We have two users here, and they are communicating with each other in a chat app. So I have, let's call it Anna, and let's call it Bruno. So when they join this chat application, they share public keys with each other. Let's say that Anna wants to send a message to Bruno. Her message, it's going to be encrypted with Bruno public key. And once the message reaches Bruno device, Bruno device is going to use his, uh, his private key to decrypt the message before displaying it on the screen, of course. So let's say a totally random and creepy user tries to intercept it somehow. It's impossible because they will never have access to the private keys. And I'm just demonstrating this because the high level overview of, of, of what passkeys provides in a security perspective, it's pretty similar. Passkeys are powerful things. At the end of the day, they provide not only stronger security because of what we just saw, but they are streamlined. And what is being streamlined? I'm sure that by this point, you might have already be used passkeys in some application. And for iPhone and the Apple ecosystem specifically, you get prompted to sync your pass keys along the iCloud chain. And the same thing happens with other ecosystems. So that means that if you switch devices, you can still reuse those. No shared secrets anymore. And the best thing of it all is that you have building an MFA. So built-in multi-factor authentication has essentially the idea that your device is the first factor. And the coolest thing about it is because it triggers biometrics to actually unlock the private key that's the second factor. OK, so we know the concept, how we can implement it. So, so far, at Clerk, we have developed a package for handling pass keys with Expo leveraging our front-end API, and Expo native modules. It's a matter of importing a single React hook. And with the use signing return, you can call a method, call it authenticate with passkey. You can also choose which flow mode you're going to use. If you want to leverage the latest iOS 16 out of view mode, you can also do so. And it's going to essentially uh, select and trigger the prompt for your users so they can start interacting with your app. Here's a quick example, super simple, calling this API for iOS. And then here's my session successfully created. Now, at Clerk, our main belief is that developers building apps shouldn't have to be concerned and take too much of their time caring about off features or anything around the user object per se. 
Instead, they should be focusing on building your viable features. And depending on the kind of business that you're dealing with, the thing is that off requirements, they scale along the way. So let's say that you decide to ship an enterprise plan, compliance comes in, and you need to implement certain protocols like SAML. Or let's say that you just want to change your off flow and put it in a more secure way, you want to introduce OTP. All of those things, they should be reactive as a service, like Lego blocks. Also, you want to make sure that off doesn't provide friction up front. Because if you're better lose your users, it's much better to be because of your features and not off itself as the first impression of your app. So it's been some time that we have introduced components, off components for Expo Web. With just a matter of rendering a signing component, you get all of the activity of off as a service. You have your off buttons. If you want to have other protocols like SAML or even support email and password, it's going to display the identifiers in inputs as expected. Reactive, as I mentioned, because along the way, along your business requirements change, you can change this directly via the dashboard. You can see the pass keys there, as we just talked about. But we don't want to keep this within Expo Web modules only. We want to go further. And so the goal is let's expand off components to all platforms. This is something that I have been working as a side project. It's coming on, it's coming, coming up pretty soon to the Clerk Expo package. It's leveraging again the native modules capability from Expo and also the recent development of Clerk native packages, Clerk iOS and Clerk Android. So off components for all platforms so that we can meet reactivity and composability. Now, I believe that the previous UI that you saw, it's, it cannot be exposed to mobile platforms. And there are two reasons for that. First, I think it's too encapsulated and big to cover all the types of screens. It wouldn't fit Apple Watch devices. And also, in mobile experiences, UI customization is a must. And in fact, I think the most complex experiences with UI that I ever saw in my life was in mobile. So that's why I want to emphasize composability. Coming up, Clerk Elements for Expo. Essentially, last year, we have introduced Clerk Elements for the web, the idea of headless components with accessibility for off, in which the developer shouldn't have to build their own markup interacting with React hooks, but they could build as Lego blocks. That's the same idea or a similar DX goal that we have for Expo. If you want to build a signing page, let's just start with it. You start by declaring a step you can put your identifier field over there. The action should continue. And let's say you want to off. You can create a connection button to sign in with Google. If you want to make it even a strength for security, you can add a verification step with email code OTP. And every single slot here gets translated to the native code behind the scenes with Clerk iOS and Clerk Android. There is one important thing when it comes to authentication experiences, which is the seamless integrated integration within your app. Avoiding as much as possible context switching so that users can authenticate as fast as possible. Let's take a look into two different examples. So this is a signing with Apple button, super simple, and you can see that it triggers a web view. Let's be honest, web views are not cool. Especially for React Native, there are so many problems with deep linking it back, etc. Tokens, stuff, it's complicated. So what if 
we can actually use native, oh, sorry, I skipped it one part. This is why we already support. It's the web viewer experience. Sometimes you really need it if you want to integrate with SAML, there's no way around it. So we have this hook in which it starts up the SSO flow connecting with the auth service. And you can pass the redirect URL in which is going to deep link back. And you can choose this strategy, which in this case, it was running off Apple. All right, now it's the native part. If you want to make it seam seamlessly integrated, we can use native Apple signing, for example. So let's get rid of this. And let's start with this one. It's much faster. There's no context switch. There's no opening a web view. And that's what we are going to expose as a simple component, leveraging Expo native modules behind the scenes with our uh, native iOS SDK. All right, we make it seamlessly now. Let's make it fast. We need to make it fast from a session initialization perspective. Two things that are huge, hugely important here. I don't even know if this was an English word, but anyway. First of all, encrypted local token storage. And second, mobile offline support. In Expo apps, the recommended way to restore sensitive data such as tokens it's by using the Expo Secure Store package, which encrypts the data before storing it. So we leverage this as well with a token cache that can be injected in the React provider. And not only that, we also have released it in a couple of months ago, an experimental resource cache so that you can have reliability in cases of bandwidth with ifs that are so common, and to bootstrap offline resources around off. So let's go back to our equation really quick. What is a good authentication that we want to aim for the future from a both developer experience and user, and user experience perspective? Well, it needs to be fast, it needs to be seamlessly integrated, and it needs to be secure. In the next couple of weeks, you can expect uh, Expo elements coming up around the Expo package. I'll probably be opening up PR pretty soon. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>